I have two coconut palms in my backyard. And we built a pool when we moved in the house six years ago, a small pool, and we put a big step on it so that when we had grandkids, they would come before they could swim and all, they could play on this big step. You know, as you went into this pool, the step is about half our pool, <laughs> you know, because it's a very small pool. And, uh, but we built it around these palm trees and they both are right up to the edge of it. And they, they made the pool so that they could stay because I love those coconut palms. There they are. And they were only about maybe six, eight, ten foot tall at the most at the time. They weren't even producing coconuts. And yet, all of a sudden when they matured, now they produce and produce and produce and produce. I don't fertilize them. I don't water them. I don't do anything. These things are just like fertile myrtle. I mean, they produce millions of coconuts, okay? And they, they, I didn't bring any this week. They're still stacked behind my, my house. But every time my grandkids come with their mom and dad, they don't want them to go in our pool because these coconut palms staying right over on each side of the pool. And when they fall, they fall on the big step. Doesn't work too much for your, your grandsons. And so we were going to have our two grandsons this summer, but, but the directions from the son and daughter-in-law were you got to get the coconuts cleaned out of the ponds before the grandsons can come. Well, that kind of gave me a little bit of incentive. You know what I mean? So uh, we have a friend of ours that's in landscaping, and he, uh, we've been waiting for quite a while for him to come over. He finally came over last week, and uh, he took his extension ladder up there and his chainsaw, and he came back down, and he told Tanya, he said, my extension ladder doesn't go far enough up there, and I can't get to those. They've grown so much. They're like 30 foot tall, those palm trees. I came home, Tanya told me, hey, he said, he'll get back with us, let us know. And I'm going, well, hold it, there's only one or two weeks left in the summer that we can actually, with our schedule, have the grandkids. And so Friday afternoon, I borrowed a 32, 40, 32 or 40 foot extension ladder from my neighbor, put it on the palm tree, took my little handheld extension, that wouldn't work, went down to Home Depot, found a 15 foot extension with a chainsaw on the end of it. Yeah, yeah woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Felt like Tim the Tool Guy or whoever that, that guy. I get on that ladder, my wife is begging me, please don't do that, you're crazy. <laughs> well, she should have known that. 33 years living with me, she should have known that. I'm going, I want my grandkids to come. My neighbors, when you're 30 foot up on an extension ladder, all the neighborhood sees you. <laughs> Thursday, Friday afternoon when they all came home, one by one would come and stand. I'd go, quick gawk and come over here and get on the ladder with me. Not one of them would do it. You shouldn't be up there. I borrowed my neighbor's ladder, which he had told me that I could any time. And he goes, what are you going to do with it? I said, I'm going to go up and cut the, the things that the professional landscaper couldn't get to. He says, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I said, I didn't ask you to. Can I borrow the ladder? <laughs> I tied the rope around the top of the, the palm tree and I went up. I took my 50, 75 pound Home Depot rawr, rawr, extension <laughs> chainsaw, revved it up. Someone said, did you tie yourself to the ladder? No. <laughs> if I fall, I don't want to strangle myself. If I die, I want to die quick. I don't want to hang, be hanging from the ladder, you know, with a rope around my neck. <laughs> you guys are laughing. It was not funny. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was so scared. I have to admit that. I'll admit that publicly. Even if I can't go. <laughs> I mean, that thing was heavy. I prayed. It took about three to five times before every bunch would come down. By the time I got them down, and I prayed all the way up the 30-foot ladder, and then I thanked God all the way down every time. <laughs> I'd go back up, work a little bit. This thing was heavy, and I'm up there, and I'm struggling, and I'm like this and that. Tanya sat next to the pool reading. When I'd go up, she'd hear the engine start going, rum, 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 you know. She'd look up. And pray and shake her head. It was, it was a nasty sight. I got one of the trees cleaned off. You saw one of them was cleaned off up there. The other one, Saturday morning, had to go up. Same thing over and over. I mean, it was scary. It was bad. I'm up there Saturday morning. Couldn't get the, the, the pod, you know, the, the cluster, like on those grapes, the cluster of all these coconuts. 
I, I, could, I just couldn't get to it, so I start just shaving each coconut. Now, I'm up here. Remember, this is 30 foot, okay? I'm on this extension ladder holding this chainsaw extension. Someone said, you know that that could cut your arm off? I said, my arm was the least thing I was worried about losing, okay? And, uh, and I'm up there. I'm cutting them down. And while I'm cutting, I'm just kind of dangling on this extension ladder, and I'm holding this thing, and it's and I'm cutting one at a time. And as I'm cutting one, one of those coconuts let loose. Yeah. And, and it was either going to hit me on the top of the head. I knew that wouldn't be a good thing. Or hit me right in the face because my nose really protrudes. You guys know that. And I knew it was going to be an ugly sight. So what I did now, I'm holding this. I'm good. And all I had it was a second I went like this. And that thing whacked me upside the head. Have you ever had a coconut hit you at full speed? Standing on a 30-foot extension ladder? I'm telling you, you're laughing. That is not funny. I blacked out for just a second. I saw stars. That's really true when they say you see stars. I saw them. When I came to, I looked down. My wife, she was just sitting there like, what could she do? She kept the phone there, 911, just in case. I, I'm telling you, that thing hit me so hard. I climbed down. I put the extension ladder. I went into the bathroom. And I looked in the mirror because I could have sworn that my jaw was over here and my head was over here. It felt it. I mean, I, I'm going, I had to preach Saturday night last week. I'm going, I will not be able to open my mouth tomorrow. My, I, my face will be so swollen. I don't know how it was God's grace on this fool that I didn't fall and kill myself or that it didn't just totally break my jaw on that cookie. But here, here's the moral of the story. Number one, kids don't try this at home has nothing to do with the sermon. But you know what? Those coconut palms, they just keep producing and producing and producing and producing. I have got a pickup truck full in my yard and in the back alley still from those trees. I, and they produce year-round. I walk back in, one of our Church of Hollywood guys works at the Pro Desk at the Home Depot downtown Hollywood, and uh, I walk back in when I'm done with that, and uh, he could tell I'd been whipped, you know, and beat up on, and uh, I walk back in, and, and I said to him, I said, the next time those coconut palms need trimming, I'm cutting the trees down. I will never do that again, and my wife is so excited, she didn't want me to ever leave those trees there. Well, I just want you to know, my grandsons are here this week. So that's, that's, that's a good part. And I'm alive to be able to see it. But you know what? When a coconut palm is doing its job, the branch is doing its job, the coconut fruit is produced. It's good fruit and just keeps being produced over and over and over. And that's what God does in our life. Perfect abundance only comes through Jesus. Jesus. 